In this episode of the Backend Engineering Show, I'd like to give my own opinion about the low code slash no code movement. Uh, you know, it's only inevitable that we're going to reach a state where people will request, you know, coding to be as. Uh, as simple as possible, really, to build a, co a complex, uh, sophisticated applications. You know, uh, we started with low level languages and we went to medium to low level languages, you know, and then high level languages, and even higher than that. And it becomes easily simpler and simpler and simpler. And the evolution just goes there. A lot of people want to be educated when it comes to computers. They want to code and talk to machines. And the only way to talk to machines is actually to understand their language. And, and if we can simplify that language as much as possible, we will have bigger portions of uh, users actually talking to machines and actually program them. So, so in this episode, I'd like to talk about... Uh, this history right and uh, i'll talk about the pros and cons my personal opinion when it comes to low code movement and then finally i'm going to talk about this concept that's called leaky abstraction which i which i really think uh, uh comes down to what questions you're trying to ask personally and what you're trying to do effectively how about we jump into it welcome to the back engineering show with your host Hussein Nasser, and I've got a lot of requests to talk about this topic, and, and I've seen it a lot. A lot of people are actually talking about this, and when th things become mainstream, usually uh, that's when you get pressure to actually talk about, you know, these concept. And this is not new, you know, low code and no code have been discussed years and years ago, right? And it all stems from the desire of having uh users actually program uh with with machines you know or write code effectively and we have we have ways to write code we start with assembly language and that's exactly this the lowest bare metal way to talk to the machine right we we're actually speaking almost the machine language itself right we're actually telling the cpu move this value from here to here do this right in order to do a simple addition we do like three or four steps to do the addition and where we're physically telling the machine what to do in order to do that operation now obviously the machine doesn't know that's doing an addition it, it has a very simple instruction set based to whatever the cpu supports and you're talking in that language effectively and obviously if if in a simple addition or simple subtraction takes three four five instructions you can imagine how building complex applications becomes right so uh people started inventing slightly higher languages you know and that's when c i believe came in and and don't quote me on the history i'm not that great when it comes to computer science history but but c was invented mainly primarily because of uh, of this slight you know friction when it comes to assembly right so data structures were created you know it's like oh this is an integer this is a string you know this is an array uh, this is a pointer and it's 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 still a lot of people don't call C C the C language high level anymore because it's still kind of low level, right? Because you're almost talking to the machine language, but we created certain abstractions around it, right? Uh, we still the data types are still kind of fine defined, right? Very finely defined. That we have an integer 32 bit, we have an integer 64 bit, and we have a long and has the, that has a, a great, a very well defined definition, and so on. Right? We have a plus operator which which translates to an actual certain sets. Right? A minus or an, uh, a minus operator which also does certain. It just simplifies things. It's just easier for humans to deal with this right and we we started building on top of that but still there was still some frictions for people who don't know computer science you know uh, working with c you really need to know how the computer works you need to know how to allocate memory and uh, you know put your put your data into memory and move it around and uh, still it wasn't it wasn't as frictionless as as people wanted it to be 
right? So uh, the languages kept evolving, right? C++ was invented, more complex data structures were created as a result, and then Python and then JavaScript were invented on top of this high level language. And now you're, you're hiding and hide. you see the pattern, right? You keep hiding stuff right from the user hey users don't really care about memory they don't want to know about memory management and all that stuff eh, let's hide this stuff from them right so let's let's invent this thing that's called garbage collector and and let's uh, let the, let us behind the scenes manage the memory right so now you declare a variable and just you forget about it right that's what you do right and if it goes out of scope you just it will be auto destroyed right higher level languages like c sharp and java does that on behind the scene for you and uh, it is specifically when users or, or programmers started with these high level languages where the problems started to appear but you can see the pattern we we in order to simplify coding right because that's the goal most of the time. How do I can how can I write the same program with f as few lines as possible, right? Yet it still becomes comprehensible. That does that's the question we were asking, and these were the programming languages that were evolved as a result. Right? Obviously, that's not entirely true because some complex data structures is just. Uh, becomes almost very hard to do in, in a low level language so the, the higher level languages also take advantage of that and create that natively in the language itself you know and instead of us worrying about how how to build I don't know, a hash map or or whatnot you know so it's only inevitable that users who want to code even are not satisfied with writing high level languages because you know People are not interested to learning data types anymore. Uh, they don't want to know any about this stuff. Uh, what's an integer string? Ugh, I don't care. You know, even in Python and JavaScript, you don't really have data types anymore, right? These are inferred. You can see that we're hiding even more stuff on the background. I know TypeScript came back and says, oh, we need those data types. So we kind of created them, you know, on, on the surface only, right? So only to be compiled back to JavaScript, which gives you back the same problem if you think about it, because it's still JavaScript, right? But at the end of the day, I believe that's what's happening, right? We're hiding stuff so we can simplify coding. So I don't need to worry about any of any of this stuff, right? And usually when these were created, they were created by people who know the operating system in and out who knows the compiler in and out who know the computers and the hardware in and out so they know all of this stuff but the users of the higher level languages and anything that comes on top of that don't necessarily know that you know when you write when you write code a lot of new programmers will just use this and hey it works what is it doing? I don't care. I'm not saying that is wrong or right, but that's that's exactly what's happening, right? So the low-code movement even came in and even abstracted that away, you know? Let's make it even simpler. Let's make it, I don't know, make it all configuration, you know? Let's just say what we want and it was going to build it. That's, that's even no-code, right? Hey, build me a Minesweeper app and it's going to build it for you. Uh, you and I know that's just silly because... Uh, no no i don't think that it's going to be as simple as it is right this this was coded so that it answers that particular question and builds a minesweeper app if 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 you say that ask the same question hey build me a street fighter app it's not going to do that right uh, but you get the point it's it's getting there it's trying to push everything towards hey how can i list uh, how can i write as fewer lines of code as possible or almost none like no line of code right so that is the question that is being asked right i don't want to know what the computer is doing i don't care i want to do this do it for me i don't care how you do it you know
And if you ask this question, you're going to get a product that does exactly that. So the questions that you are not asking are the app that results from the no code slash low code, are they going to be efficient in resource utilization? Are they going to be scalable or are they going to be performant? You know, I'm, if you're going to guess, the answer is no to all these three, right? Or let's say not necessarily, because we know how much time and effort is spent to build a scalable app, right? From experience. So these apps that result in no code, they won't be answering these kind of questions because you cannot be, you, you cannot have a perfect word, right? You cannot have a application that is written in three lines of code or speech recognition and have it performant and have it scalable and have it inefficient in resource utilization. And, and, and you cannot have that. You got to do trade-offs. That's how life is, right? So that's what you lose. And I, this is something I know I personally don't want to give up. Uh, in fact, the more I use, forget about low code, right? The more I, I use high level languages and the more I get bit by high level languages, it makes me actually want to go back and code in C. Yeah, that's that's how I started to feel because I, you know, I, I've been spoiled by high level languages. You know, when I say high level languages, I, I, I started coding with VB6 and then we moved to VB and then C Sharp and then JavaScript because it's just popular. And now it's just the, the, the magic that JavaScript does behind the scenes. It's just, I'm not comfortable with anymore. You know, all these small things that you, that you really need to know in and out. You know? These questions, are, I was personally not interested in at all, you know, but now I change my mind. The more I know, the more I kind of understand how the computers work and how memory efficiency work, how, you know, uh, buffer overflows, attacks work, and then, then uh, numerical integer overflows, you know, declare a variable and all of a sudden you don't know what's the, uh, what size this variable is or what, how many bits it uses, whether 32 or 64, it's just abstracted away from you. You know, and when things, and that comes back to the final point that we're going to discuss, is it, which is leaky abstractions, um, uh, which is invented, I believe, with uh, by Joel Spolasky. Might have butchered his last name, but but the idea, and I thought I made a video about leaky abstractions, is the idea of just yeah, let's let's make things simple, let's let's abstract it away, let's abstract away the complexity of of uh, us talking to the disk and io and let's create this thing that's called sql language right that will do that for us right the sql language is one of the highest leaky abstraction languages there is because you can execute the same exact query twice and you can get a completely different performance as a result right because the database decided based on outdated statistics that oh a, a, a full table scan might be better than an index scan and will go that bad and it will scan the entire table, right? With millions of rows. Although an index scan would have been better. But how do you know that? The planner made the decision point. You were, you were taken out of the equation as an engineer. You just wrote the query and now you are blind. And I don't want to be that, right? You know? I like that's why I like to kind of explore anything beneath that. And this might not be you, to be honest. That might not be questions you're interested in. Okay? I, I, I want to, and then uh, that's why I am I am very wary of using ORMs and object relational, you know, models. Anything mapping, sorry, anything on top of the SQL. Oh my God, the SQL as it is is leaky, and now add this leakiest thing on top let's just ha wrap everything into objects and let's just simplify things that this every problem comes from this simplification because we're just i don't know lazy i guess we don't want to write a few more lines of code let's just build a library right that simplifies this 
um, and and ORMs comes with all share of problems. Look at how many YouTube videos trying to solve the N plus one problem, which wouldn't exist if you if you didn't create an ORM, right? Uh, yeah, I mean ORMs are useful, but you can do all of that stuff directly in SQL, right? And even you just using SQL, it is it is very complex by itself, right? And and that's why you need to really understand what the database is actually doing. How's the data model, you know, architected, and and how 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 is the storage model? Is it row store, columns? Store? All these questions you cannot leave it to a black box. And ORM is a black box to me. So low code is is even a blacker, I guess. <laughs> box. It's just. It's just a darker box that just hides things away. And, and as an engineer, I personally, I'm not interested in. Now, for people who are not interested in, in, in deep engineering, you know, technical thing, and they want to build a simple app, they can use no code. And I don't see a problem with that. I, I, in fact, the pros of the low code movement is just it will expose a lot of people to engineering and they will write more code you know more application that's that's a good thing i i, I believe i think uh will these apps will be as performant and great i don't think so personally right i don't i think it's gonna become uh, you know it, it will get into it will create a new community let's say and that community will have its own problems okay oh when i did this i got this particular error in my low code platform i don't i don't know any of low code problem i believe that there are a couple of them frameworks right and then uh, oh this is what happens oh, what what should i do oh go to the configuration and delete this part yeah, I, I think this is what ha will start happening you'll see it will create an economy by itself and that's what we're gonna happen i'm i'm not saying this is good or bad uh, that's why also i'm very wary of using uh, front-end frameworks you know just react and svelte and melt and just bootstrap 503070 uh even when css came in it's like really we need css what is this why do you need styling right we can do this stuff in line then i got convinced like okay you're not gonna apply the same style for 700 elements you need to do it once and then apply a class that i was convinced by that you know but then i heard that bootstrap this thing is just abstract away the complexity of css and then the yeah it's just it, it's an in, unending chase in my opinion I, I don't know where we're going with that you know the back end started to be, do the same thing you know uh let's just create these orms and django and 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 uh, yeah i don't know it might be just me so don't listen to me so that's just my personal opinion that's why i like to you know understand the fundamentals the low level stuff and then yeah if i find myself writing a lot of code and i know what an orm or a framework does in and out then i might choose it i'm not gonna use a framework uh, that is blindly doing something that i don't understand anymore i don't like to do that because I, I take pride of my job of software engineer and i know i like to know everything that goes behind the scene right and that's that, that's just my personal opinion but in general i i think it's a, it's a useful technology just be wary of what is it doing on the back end uh my friend told me actually that they are using low code uh, in their uh, work and he's he's a sophisticated security engineer you know it's just he knows his everything in and out and he is actually happy with low code just because it, the the iteration uh, when it comes to configuration is just very simple uh, you you can talk in basically they talk in configurations you know change this configuration let's do this uh, i don't know slash slash add tls and then just does the tls well, magic there. So it's almost like you're talking in the configuration. So iteration between, you know, team members and uh, it is easier, I think. But I, I, I think personally, I think the ramification will come w when the leaky abstraction started to leak up the stack and you, s you can see it in form of uh, performance in form of uh, you know efficiency for, uh, in form of 100 percent cpu usage and that that is when we will get eff effectively 
bit real hard, I believe, by low code. All right, guys, that's all from me today. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.